Welcome to the I Can Do Anything podcast. My name is Colin. Today on the I Can Do Anything podcast, I will be talking about the NBA draft and early free agency uh, reports and rumors because I can do anything. The I Can Do Anything podcast today is brought to you by Witch Doctor. With Witch Doctor, you can cast the spirits out of your life with their easy-to-use mobile app. Available on all your devices and across mobile platforms, the app offers a wide variety of easy-to-perform spells that can help cure the most complex of issues in your life to the most simple. The app is actually really cool. I downloaded it and was able to get rid of a spirit that was turning my Himalayan salt lamp on and off in the middle of the night. Uh, I would wake up and the, the salt lamp would be the salt lamp would be off and I knew that it was on when I when I went to sleep that night um, and then I'd, I'd leave it off you know like when I went to work and then I'd come back home from work and it would it would be back on again uh, I don't think that pow- that's how power outages work I don't think power outages can turn something back on. I know it wasn't a power outage. My guess was that it was, I really didn't guess that it was a witch, but I had some, you know, I had some inklings. I don't really believe in that kind of thing either. But uh, Witch Doctor has, has kind of, has transformed that thought a little bit. It even has stories uh, from witch history, like the story of Libel, uh, Cybele Leek, one of the most famous modern witches, and excerpts from her book, uh, such as Diary of a Witch, or the story of Anne Boylan, the second wife of Henry VII of England, and her history with witchcraft, witchcraft that led to her beheading in 1536. Witch Doctor even has additional in-app purchases like crystal balls, pointed hats, broomsticks, black cloaks, wands, and potions. Download Witch Doctor today, but be careful. You never know what magic powers you might find. The I Can Do Anything podcast is also brought to you by Blind Acquisition, the leading dating site for those who are looking for a mystery. Blind Acquisition provides some of the best results among similar dating apps, although... I don't think any dating apps sort of take this same approach. I don't think there are similar dating apps. Dating can be difficult, and many of us are very picky about who will be seen with in public. Let Blind Acquisition set you up on a blind date for the ages. Download the Blind Acquisition app today on your mobile device. Set up your profile, and your dream date you've been waiting for will be lined up for you before you know it. Uh, Yeah, blind acquisition is not really similar to any kind of dating app. Uh, Most dating apps or all dating apps, you can see who you're picking. Um, You're swiping right or left. But with blind acquisition, you just set up your profile. um, And it'll match you up with, with somebody based on, you know, all the same you know algorithms or whatever that most dating sites use. But in this case, blind. So the NBA draft was Thursday night. Uh, Obviously, Zion Williamson went first, uh, followed by John Morant to the Grizzlies second. The Knicks took R.J. Barrett. So one, two, three were as predicted. There was a little bit of a shakeup. The Lakers' fourth pick. um, They're actually currently in discussions with the Pelicans, who will reportedly trade the pick to the Hawks. They took DeAndre Hunter from Virginia. Um, And then the Cavs with the fifth pick took Darius Garland. (laughs) Oh, the Cavaliers, man. You're taking a guy, Darius Garland, a undersized point guard. Uh, really an undersized two guard. He's re- uh, Darius Garland, from, from what I've watched, seems like, uh, for the most part, a, a prototypical point guard in the NBA, although his scoring abilities seem to be a little stronger than his playmaking and assisting or passing abilities. Um, but this is what they took last year. Darius Garland's going to be a better shooter um, than their first round draft pick, who's uh, Colin Sexton from last year. I don't know. Just a. You can't. <laughs> yeah. The Cavs kind of got screwed. I mean, being the fifth pick, um, this was really a three person draft in a lot of ways. Cam Reddish fell to 10, which sort of surprised me. I'm surprised that he. I don't know. Just just what I've seen, I'm surprised that Cam Reddish wasn't like projected to be that fifth pick. Uh, he seems really talented. 
you know, uh, seems like he could be a shooter in the NBA. He, he was able to shoot the college three um, and just seems like with the proficiency, proficiency that, wow, with the proficiency that he shot the college three that maybe he could take a couple steps back and shoot an NBA three at least, you know, average to above average. Um, so I was sort of surprised that he fell 10th to the Hawks. The Hawks, in my opinion, had a pretty good draft. Uh, they got Cam Reddish with the 10th pick. And then they got Silva, uh, who's from Brazil, with the 35th pick. I don't know anything about that pick. Um, there was another one that the Hawks drafted, too. Who else did the Hawks pick up? Oh, they had the eighth pick, um, but they're in discussions. They took Jackson Hayes, who I don't even know who that is, but they're they're in discussions to trade that pick to the Pelicans as well. Um, gosh, who was the other who was the other Hawks pick? Oh, they'll get that's right. They'll get the uh, DeAndre Hunter, the Lakers' fourth pick. So they got DeAndre Hunter out of Virginia, and then. Cam Reddish from Duke. Uh, they got. I actually just got a notification uh, last night before I went to sleep that um, Matt McQuaid. Oh, unrelated. Matt McQuaid. I guess the the, the relation is they're Michigan State guys. The Hawks uh, picked up uh, Nick Ward, who will more than likely play on their NBA summer league team, and then the Pistons picked up Matt McQuaid, um, who will play in their summer league games. Um, so that's exciting for Michigan State that two of their seniors, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. Matt McQuaid seems to me to have more potential than Nick Ward. Nick Ward's lack of shooting ability, I think, will, will eliminate him from um, having much of an NBA career. But I think Matt McQuaid as a shooter um, and as a, as a defender, as a, as a good guard defender, could be a great 3 and D guy in the league. I think um, kind of similar to... The guy out of Virginia, um, ironically, his name is Kyle Guy. Um, he was drafted 55th to the Knicks, uh, although they're currently in trade discussions with the Kings. Those those two guys kind of seem like they could be similar. I think Matt McQuaid's probably a better defender than Kyle Guy, uh, although Kyle Guy was on the best defensive team in the league in Virginia. Uh, throughout the season so I think they could be very similar players in the NBA they kind of to me um, the, you know their best case scenario I hate to make it a white guy thing but they're two white guys that are going to be playing in the NBA as shooters um, and then as like perimeter defenders they've kind of got that same you know best case scenario as like a J.J. Redick or a Kyle Korver um, Although neither of those guys, J.J. Reddick's a pretty good defender. Um, Kyle Korver is not the greatest defender, um, but certainly had his moments like in those playoff runs with the Cavs, did a pretty good job defensively. Um, although given the matchup, he was certainly exploited and, and targeted defensively. But those guys, Kyle Guy and Matt McQuaid, could have a you know best case scenario, J.J. Reddick, Kyle Korver, um, but I don't see them really being anything better uh, than like a Goran Dragic or like a Kirk Heinrich. Um, you know, they could make impacts on championship teams, maybe, uh, you know, in similar ways that like Danny Green uh, has done for the Spurs and most recently for the Raptors. Um, it's really difficult for me. And this is why people who are recruiters and scouts in the NBA get get paid good money. Uh, they don't necessarily get paid the big bucks, um, but they get paid really good money because it's difficult as fuck. You know, once you get past like 12, 20, something like that as far as picks go in the draft, it's really tough to like figure out, you know, which one of these guys is going to be the next Kawhi Leonard or the next Paul George or the next Draymond Green. You know, these guys that are picked later in the draft that, you know, that have that become future MVPs and, and championship pieces and NBA finals MVPs uh, like Kawhi Leonard again with the Spurs and with the Raptors. Um, 
a big a big one for me was Carson Edwards. I know that a lot of people were were looking at Carson Edwards and seeing where he would go in this draft and kind of looking at, at him as a sleeper. He may be uh, the big sleeper. I've heard comparisons to Fred Van Vliet for him. He's certainly a, a prolific scorer. Um, and going to the 76ers with a 33rd pick. Um, oh, never mind. He was traded to the Celtics. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I really liked him in, as a, with the 76ers. I, he, would, he would be a really good complement uh, if J.J. Redick, who is, who is a free agent, um, were to leave to possibly go to L.A. to, to, to join up with LeBron. Um, but even if he stayed, like those, those two guys, you could have J.J. Redick start at the two next to uh, Ben Simmons the way that they did this this whole pretty much this whole or you know the last three-fourths of this last NBA season and then have Carson Edwards come off the bench and, and be a good bench scorer or without J.J. Redick he could start at the two uh, for them I don't really it's hard for me to figure out you know they've got Jimmy Butler who's a who's a free agent they got Tobias Harris who's a free agent so the 76ers uh, are really kind of up in the air it's you know they could go from having four uh like legit stars in the nba tobias harris jimmy butler joel Embiid, ben simmons and a really great complimentary shooting piece in jj reddick to only having ben simmons uh for one more year guaranteed i think he's a free agent or maybe has the option to become a free agent at the end uh of the 2019 2020 season so in the spring of 2020 or i guess in the summer of 2020 um to just having those two guys ben simmons and Embiid, and i don't know what Embiid's contract situation is but my guess is that it's probably up within the next one to three years um so yeah i look at at carson edwards who now goes to the celtics um the celtics again in the east their future is up in the air with with al horford um recently making news that he doesn't want to re-sign and, and would like to to sign a long-term agreement with some other team um god al horford would be al horford would be a really good piece to add to lebron you give that senior veteran leadership he's got the ability to to step outside and shoot from you know anywhere from you know really all over the floor he's got a good like 13 to to 24 foot shot you know the, the nba three is 23 nine so um al horford would be an incredible piece to add to the lakers uh but the celtics losing possibly horford and then potentially losing i mean more than likely losing kyrie irving um god their future is up and up for grabs now jason tatum will be over will be able to i mean he'll be their guy now he's going to be their leading scorer you know assuming that both of those guys are gone. J, uh, Jalen Brown's going to have a, a a really increased role. Gordon Hayward, you know, can can look to come off of a um, underwhelming season, I guess, coming off of that that pretty horrific ankle injury. Um, you know, he certainly and everyone in Boston was certainly hoping that he would come back in and and that they'd pick off pick up where the where the team left off losing and I, th- I believe it was losing in seven games to LeBron and the Cavs the year before in the Eastern Conference Finals uh, but that just certainly wasn't the case so um, you know maybe given a little bit bigger of a role and being that I mean he'll be the leader there he'll be the veteran leader with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum being young guys um, so the East is just kind of like deteriorating, you know, there's still the potential that, that two guys, two max guys could team up in Brooklyn. Um, it seems like Brooklyn is, is now making a decision or hoping to make a decision between Kyrie and Russell. Um, is that his name? I always get these two mixed up. D'Angelo. Yeah. D'Angelo Russell. Um, seems like they're making a choice between those two um apparently there's rumors that Kyrie Irving has bought a house in New York um I'm not sure where in New York or where in relation it is you know to the Knicks or to the 
you know, to Madison Square Garden or the the Knicks practice. You know, these guys don't buy houses based on their commute necessarily. Like these guys aren't trying to necessarily have a short commute. Like it's funny the the Nets moved from New Jersey to Brooklyn, and more than likely. A majority of the guys that play for the Nets probably live in the suburbs of New Jersey, um, you know, away from the city life and the crime <laughs> uh, of New York. But it seems like, uh, you know, Brooklyn. So I don't know. So I don't know where Kyrie's house is, but, um, it, you know, the location doesn't necessarily matter other than the fact that it's in the New York area. Um, so if those rumors are true, that I, regardless of where Kyrie goes, he's got to team up with somebody. Um, and it's more than likely not going to be, even if it is Duran, it's not going to be for this next year. Um, so we're, pretty much wherever he goes, unless it's with LeBron and the Lakers, I don't see him necessarily having much of a uh, impact as far as contending teams go. But like I was saying, the East is sort of deteriorating because if he goes to either of those teams, he's not going to have he's not going to have Durant. You know, there's chances that he gets Jimmy Butler. I haven't heard much about Jimmy Butler going anywhere other than like Houston or staying in in Philadelphia. Um, I would fuck. I'd love to see Jimmy Butler play with LeBron. Um, and then the the CP3 thing is interesting. Um, those three guys, CP3, Harden, and Jimmy Butler in Houston, I don't know. It's interesting how the NBA landscape now is about clashing or combining personalities and, you know, styles of play. It's, it's pretty fascinating how, you know, you can make predictions about whether or not three or four guys or two guys are going to work well together. You know, I think what the 76ers had with those four, Simmons, Embiid, Butler, and Harris is a work in progress. They got together, you know, right at the trade deadline or just before the trade deadline. So they didn't really have the time to kind of figure that whole thing out. Ben Simmons is young. Joel Embiid's still really learning. And they got beat by, a, you know, the eventual... NBA champions, the the Raptors. So if you're the 76ers, I mean, you're working as hard as you can to keep all four of those guys there, at least all two of those guys, uh, Harris and Butler, who are now free agents. If you can keep those four guys, I mean, I think they have a legit shot in the East with the Celtics becoming a little worse, um, the Raptors potentially losing Kawhi Leonard. The 76ers could be the front runner in the East next year. Um, you know, Chris Middleton may stay in Milwaukee. I think more than likely he does stay in Milwaukee, um, and they'll be a you know they'll be a contender in the East. But I think it could be um, if Kawhi leaves, it could be the 76ers and the Bucks. Um, you know, give or take the the order there. I think the Bucks had a great year this year, so they'd more than likely be the favorite if Kawhi were to leave and go to go to the Clippers or just go elsewhere. Um, but that being said, I don't really see Kawhi leaving. I don't know why, unless he just really wants to go to L.A., like I've mentioned in previous podcasts, like unless he just really wants to be in L.A., why the fuck would you leave the champions? you got a great core... Um, and again, the East, you know, could just be you in the East very well. Butler and Harris could leave. And then the 76ers would just have those two guys and not a lot of pieces, you know? So, um, a lot of shakeups thus far. The CP3 thing though is interesting. I didn't really touch on that the way I wanted to. The CP3 trade rumors are funny. You know, you got people reporting that, CP3 and and James Harden didn't talk for, you know, the last, I don't remember what it was, if it was the last couple weeks of the season or the last month, like they were not on communicating terms or whatever. And CP3 comments on, on some of the reports and says, this is news to me. And then talks to Stephen A and says that, um, that he never requested a trade. It's funny how these things come about. Like, where does that trade rumor, that initial report come from? Do people just make this shit up? I mean, I know that we're in the age of, I don't even, I'm not even going to say that phrase. 
I'm not even going to say it. I know we're in the age of spin, as Dave Chappelle said, and people will just run with some, they'll just fucking find a story and throw it out there and get hits on it. And if that were the case with this story, it certainly worked. I know that there was a lot of talk around it. Um, you know, Mike D'Antoni's potential, I think he's got one year left on his contract, but his potential uh, impending, I don't know, retirement or contract ending. Uh, if, if it were me, Daryl Morey, <laughs> I don't know, man. Daryl Morey, as far as I'm concerned, is really fucking stupid, man. I've said it multiple times. I've talked at length about how dumb I think Daryl Morey is. Um, and just a lot of the comments that he makes. I mean, I know he's the, on the he's the owner of the team, and he's got to remain positive. But um, I don't know. He said they want to try and sign another star, and that they and that the CP3 and Harden aren't aren't feuding. Um, and I read that before, um, you know, before Chris Paul ever ended up coming out and saying that he never did ask for a trade, which. I, I would love to believe Chris Paul, I, and I, and for the most part, I do. But these guys will say, I mean, he could just be saying that to try to, I don't know, to try to strengthen the tr the. Tr I don't know. There's get, there's always some like underlying thing. He could be trying to strengthen or weaken the trade market, or you know, just at least dumb down the talks or quiet the talks um, around that so that he can figure out what he wants to do and talk with other teams and other players. Um, but yeah, Daryl Morey said that they want to try to sign another star and that CP3 and, and Harden aren't feuding. But if that is the case, they're not signing another star. If James Harden and CP3 don't like playing with each other, what makes... Daryl Morey think that Jimmy Butler is going to come play there or that anybody else is going to come play there. You know, James Harden and Dwight Howard couldn't figure it out. And I know that Dwight Howard is, those two are probably the most, between Carmelo Anthony, who Daryl Morey also signed for a little while, and it didn't work out because of this, because James Harden, Carmelo Anthony, and Dwight Howard, three guys that Daryl Morey has signed, all very similar in style of play, sort of, especially for like, you know, especially for Harden and Carmelo, not necessarily Dwight, but their personalities are all the same. It's just not guys that throughout their, their tenures and their careers in the NBA have, they're just not, people don't want to play with them. Dwight Howard's not even, I mean, he's been injured all last season, but like Dwight Howard may never play in the NBA again. Carmelo Anthony, you know, although his career was, was pretty significantly longer than Dwight Howard's, he may never play in the NBA again. And James Harden, you know, a former MVP could potentially win MVP um, on Tuesday, or is that Monday? coming up on the 24th I believe that's Monday yeah today's the 22nd um, in the MVP awards that are coming up on Monday you know could very well win MVP but you know I just don't see anybody wanting to play with James Harden like why would you want to go especially if you're Jimmy Butler a guy that you know can play off the ball but you know you could play with LeBron and get a lot more shots than than if you're going to play with James Harden I just don't see why anybody would want to go play there um, you just the whole like live or die by analytics thing. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's clearly not working. The whole thing that he did with, with like doing a study on the refs and like breaking down every call, hiring a professional, like a personal detective, um, to like, keep track of the missed calls. It's just fucking, it's childish. It's like, we're not beating the Warriors. I'm going <laughs> to, I don't know. It's so stupid. Um, he just seems like an idiot. Dob had a really hot take that he texted me um, the other day. He thinks, <laughs> you know what? Fuck you, Dob. I'm not even going to say it. It's pretty funny. I'll let Dob say it for himself um, in a couple weeks when he's back on the podcast. Um, so I think that's really it as far as like, 
um, free agency and trade stuff goes, let me go back to the NBA homepage and just kind of take a quick skim, a little glance um, at some of the headlines. Um, the Pelicans roster seems like it's kind of rounding out. You know, they're going to be extremely young. Um, but in the future, they could, I, you know, it'll, be, it'll all depend on whether or not Zion Williamson develops a jump shot and can become like a dominant force like people think he can. You know, it's, it's not going to happen for a while. You know, it took every other superstar, Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, Magic was a lot quicker. He won a championship in his first season. <laughs> um, but it took all these guys a long time to figure it out. And, uh, you know, the, the Pelicans aren't going to be good immediately next year. I don't think they make the playoffs, but they very well um, could be a high playoff seed or a low playoff seed. Um, seven takeaways from Lakers reported trade for Anthony Davis. Seven takeaways from the reported blockbuster trade sending New Orleans star Anthony Davis to the Los Angeles Lakers for, oh, I thought this was going to be an addition to, or like some sort of new thing that came through. Oh, the jazz. The jazz thing is interesting. My buddy Ben Van Dockenberg who is a really big jazz fan and just loves following the jazz texted me um, as soon as the Mike Conley trade went through. Um, so the jazz get Mike Conley and they send Grayson Allen, Kyle Corver, Jay Crowder, and the number 23 pick in the 2019 draft. Um, and then a future first round pick. I'm not sure who that 23rd pick was. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back to the draft board here and s let's see who that 23rd pick was that's going to go to the Jazz. That is Darius Baisley, and the Jazz are currently in discussions to trade the yeah to trade the pick to the Grizzlies, who will reportedly trade the pick to the Thunder. Okay, so they're not even going to get that that 23rd pick. But um, Ben was excited about this, and I, I mean I kind of I kind of pushed back a little bit, um, you know, mainly just sort of to play devil's advocate because I enjoy doing that with with a good majority of my friends, um, but. This makes the Jazz, you know, now they, now, uh, what's his name, can, can really be a two guard, Donovan Mitchell. You put Mike Conley at the one, Donovan Mitchell at the two, Joe Ingles starting at the three, Derek Favors at the four, and Rudy Gobert at the five. And the Jazz may wave Favors um, in lieu of trying to get a stretch four um, because that's really not what what Derek Favors is. I don't know. I don't see them beating the Blazers. I don't see them beating the Nuggets. Uh, if this Rockets thing blows up, I could see them beating the Rockets, maybe. I could see them beating the Rockets, maybe even if it doesn't blow up. But, you know, there's a really strong argument you could make that the Rockets could still beat this Jazz team. You know, if the Lakers... I, I don't see them beating the Lakers with only LeBron and Anthony Davis, let alone if they get a couple more guys. You know, even if they get good pieces to surround, but let alone if they get another superstar to go along with. Um, you know, so that's Blazers, Nuggets, Rockets... Clippers potentially if they get Kawhi, the Lakers, you know, that's the five. That's the, probably the top five seeds in the West. And you know, you, we're still not talking about the Warriors, who sure they lost Durant and Clay Thompson to injury for the majority of the season. You know, Clay Thompson could come back in March. He could come back in April. And if they're in the playoffs with Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Steph Curry, oh yeah, did you forget about Steph Curry? One of the greatest point guards to ever play the game, probably in the top five greatest players in the NBA right now. Steph Curry could still have a – Steph Curry is going to be – you know, we're going to get to watch pretty much Steph Curry go off every night. And if they're smart, they're going to rest him enough that he's not completely – you know, that he's not James Harden in the playoffs, you know, putting all your effort into the regular season and then getting ousted in the playoffs. Um 
but the Warriors could very well still be, you know, so uh, a, a top seed. You know, they could they could fuck fuck around and be a four seed or something like that in the NBA playoffs in the West next year. So the Jazz, you know, could potentially still be like eight, seven, or six, maybe five in the West. You know, as long as they're in the playoffs. They got a shot to to make a run. I think Mike Conley, although he doesn't have, you know, playoff experience playing with the Grizzlies, really. I mean, they they they've had a little bit, but then he got injured uh, against the Warriors. That face injury um, against the Warriors back in like 2014 or 15 or something like that. But you know, he doesn't have a lot of playoff experience. But Conley, you know, as a veteran, could make a, a big difference for the jazz and could make them i mean the west is really really open we're going to see what happens in free agency but maybe it makes them a contender in the west i'm not really sold on it but it certainly could um i think that's about all i got today There's reports that Hassan Whiteside opts in for $27 million with the Heat. Hassan Whiteside is not leaving the final year, uh, not leaving the final year of the Heat deal on the table. A person with knowledge of the situation said Friday that Whiteside is exercising his $27.1 million option for next season in Miami. Um, the move was not a surprise. It'll be the final year of Whiteside's four-year, $98 million contract with the Miami Heat, and the salary he'll command next season will keep him as the highest-paid player on the Heat roster. He averaged 12.3 points and a team-best 11.3 rebounds last season, appearing in 72 games and starting 53 of those games. Um, Hassan Hassan, Hassan, Hassan Whiteside's an interesting one. He's kind of one of these bigs that's like sort of still your traditional big man from like the early 2000s and even like going back to the 90s. You know, he's not probably not necessarily as strong as he's as strong, but maybe not as tough physically and mentally as a lot of those bigs back in the 90s and the early 2000s, but has that same um, pedigree sort of. He's just not really a shooter. Um, hasn't really transformed into into today's NBA. Um, this will be kind of what I see his, you know, he'll just kind of play for these marginal teams. They'll be on the bubble of making the playoffs, but he'll never really have that significant overall impact on a team uh, to where he can, you know, if he was a piece, he could come in and, you know, like if he were, he kind of reminds me of Damian Jones that plays for the Warriors that was, really good for them at the beginning of the season and was injured for um, a majority of the season. I think he was available for them in the playoffs, but just um, wasn't fresh enough to for Steve Kerr to trust to throw him in there. But he kind of reminds me of Hassan Whiteside. Um, and he could have a, you know, a, a, a good impact on a, on a really good team, but he's never going to be that star piece. Um, so I think if, if he were smart, after this contract's up, he would take a little less money and go play somewhere else. But money is smart, too, <laughs> you know. So maybe he could just continue to, to play on these marginal, mediocre teams, make good money, and just be a fucking NBA guy chilling, making good money and, you know, living a good life. Fuck, dude. My, living in Miami would be cool. I personally wouldn't want to live in Miami, but it would certainly, you know, if, you're, if your personality type suited that, that lifestyle, Miami would be an incredible place to live. Um, this episode and this portion of the I Can Do Anything podcast is brought to you by Beat Freak. The I Can Do Anything podcast brought to you by Beat Freak. Beat Freak makes beat making easy. You don't need sophisticated beat making software anymore. You don't even need instruments. With powerful technology that has an array of instruments to choose from, you never have to use a tinny sounding snare snippet or a dull guitar riff again. The latest in synthesizer and electronic production components comes at an affordable price with Beat Freak. Visit beatfreak.com backslash anything for your limited time offer at amazing professional quality sounding instruments at your fingertips. That's B E A 
A-N-Y-T-H-I-N-G-A-T-F-R-E-A-K.com backslash anything, A-N-Y-T-H-I-N-G for your limited time offer at an amazing professional quality sounding instruments at your fingertips. Don't be a freak. Get Beat Freak. The I Can Do Anything podcast is also brought to you by Standard Process. Since 1929, Standard Process has been dedicated to the field of nutritional supplements and the whole food philosophy introduced by Dr. Royal Lee. With Standard Process supplements, you will discover just how resilient your body can be when given the proper nutrition. Standard Process supplements contain time-tested formulas with whole food ingredients that provide safe, effective, high-quality nutritional support available through healthcare professionals. Our products promote a better quality of life for our customers. Standard Process supplements have what you need okay folks thanks for listening to the i can do anything podcast today i will be back um more than likely sometime next week i think i'll probably report back early next week after the mvp um and the awards ceremony um and just give you my overall thought on it my prediction again is more than likely that Giannis, I, I really, really hope Antetokounmpo wins the MVP. Um, I'm not going to go through all the other awards. I, I've, I did that in a, in a past episode uh, of the podcast. More than likely, you don't give a fuck. And if you do, go back and listen to it. I don't fucking know which one it is, but just listen to a bunch of these episodes, you know? You might as well. You ain't got shit else to do. You can do anything, so just you know, peruse through the catalog. Thanks for listening to the I Can Do Anything podcast. Again, brought to you by Standard Process, Beat Freak, Witch Doctor, and was there any more for today? No, I think that was it. I can do anything. <laughs>